the division of Africa, and imperial expansion. The imperial expansion in the African continent by the European nations is supposed to be one of the significant events in the history of the world. By 1870, England had set up colonies in the coastal regions of Cape, Natal, Lagos, Gold Coast and Zambia. France had colonized Algeria, French Guinea, Ivory Coast, whereas Portugal brought under its control Mozambique and Angola. The status of becoming the first colonizer in the African continent went to Belgium by establishing its colony in Africa in the second half of the 19th century. King Leopold of Belgium erected a colony in the Congo River Basin. England, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal and Holland had their colonies in Africa after Belgium had colonized African region. The effects of imperialism Modern imperialism, forcing supremacy over weaker nations, had constructive and destructive effects in modern times. A. The constructive effects of imperialism First, physical reformations. The European nations had to bring in some reformations for maintaining a control of the colonies. These reformations consisted in making of roads for quick military movement and internal transportation, railway, post, telegraph, aeroplanes, canals, etc. As the colonizers stood to gain these facilities, it also helped local people creating a kind of interaction among people. Second, spread of education. For the sake of prosperous business, propagation of Christianity and humanitarian interests, education was given a boost. Consequently, the colonies came under the impact of Western education. Instead of importing educated people from the native places, the colonizers began to educate the local people for raising qualified manpower necessary in assisting administration. Third, intellectual change. There began an intellectual exchange among the people belonging to different parts of the world. The people of the colonies were brought abreast of the western thoughts of their colonizers. They got acquainted with the innovative ideas, technology, science, philosophy, literature, law and politics. Colonization also introduced the people to the principles of liberty, equality and fraternity and the philosophies of nationalism, socialism, communism and democracy. The progressive mindset was created by uprooting ignorance and blind faith by social and religious reformers. Fourth, national integrity. The imperial nations brought various parts of the colonies under one region. This centralized governing system integrated the colonies. Before the imperial reign, most of the colonies were divided and governed by various rulers. Lack of uniformity due to various types of rulers and rules gave rise to irregularities in governance, law and legal system. Nevertheless, the imperial nations brought the scattered regions and reigns under one banner and established one governing system, uniform rules and regulations and one legal system. Consequently, they came into being national integrity. Especially, 
the undeveloped colonies were benefited by imperialism. Fifth, suppression of underdeveloped nations. The imperial nations had the objective of developing themselves by ruling the colonies. They governed the people in the colonies thoughtlessly. Many nations in the world were put into the shackles of dependence. The nations which had lost independence were made to undertake a long drawn out struggle for freedom. Sixth, Armament Race The intensity of tension in the international politics grew rapidly because of the cutthroat rivalry among the European nations for imperial expansion. Every European nation braced up its military for ensuring security which gave rise to the arms race. The imperial nations grew suspicious of one another. There rose an unabated desire for ruling other nations. The small-scale struggles gradually magnified into intense conflicts like the First World War, which eventually broke out in the year 1914. B. The Destructive Effects of Imperialism First, Trade of Slaves The imperial nations ill-treated the people of the colonies. They began the ghastly practice of buying and selling slaves for getting laborers at cheaper prices. Second, Decline of Values In order to maintain the reem, the imperial nations adopted the policy of divide and rule. They deliberately sowed a sense of hostility among social groups. They witnessed a degradation of morality in the colonies due to enmity, violence, selfishness and indulgence among the people. Thus, the atmosphere in the colonies were polluted by the colonizers. Third, Economic Exploitation The European nations had been vying with one another for procuring the raw materials and capturing markets for their products. They found the undeveloped nations to be a source of raw materials and potential markets. Thus, colonies were set up for economic exploitation. Fourth, Destruction of Village Autonomy As far as India was concerned, the land revenue system adopted by the British government had a totally adverse influence on the rural life. Farmers had to mortgage their land. Instead of money, they started to give land for paying the taxes to the white government. As a consequence, the farmers became bankrupt. The goods exported to England were taxed. The villages lost their self-reliance. Indian industries were closed down, making workers jobless. Fifth, Rise of New Leadership The European nations created the domination over the nations of Asia and Africa. The royal regimes and the feuds of the colonies were put down and brought a monopolistic governance. The newly educated middle class started to oppose the Western imperialism. As a result, the progressive-minded members of the middle class led many struggles for freedom. C. Imperialism in Africa The Portuguese sailor, Bartholomew Dias, had undertaken a mission of discovering India. However, he could reach Cape of Good Hope only and couldn't go to India. Nevertheless, his sailing brought the African continent to the notice of European nations. The trade of slaves carried on by Europeans brought the European nations in association with the coastal regions of Africa. Till the middle of the 19th century, the Westerners didn't have any idea of the interiors of the African continent. Africa had dense forests, big lakes, perennial rivers, 
and large tracts of deserts. However, the composition of Africa was not known to the world at large. Hence, it was called the unknown or dark continent until the 18th century. In the second half of the 19th century, the courageous European travellers, Mungo Park, Captain Spake, Sir Samuel Baker, David Livingstone and Stanley discovered the regions belonging to the basins of the Nile, the Niger, the Congo and the Zambezi rivers in Africa and brought them to the notice of the world. The book written by Stanley, an American journalist, created among the European people a kind of attraction towards Africa. It gave rise to the public opinion favoring colonization of regions in the African continent. European nations began the competition for capturing the best regions of Africa. The travelogue by Stanley woke up a curiosity in the European people regarding Africa. England England set up its colonies in the Niger River Basin of Africa. In addition, England held its domination of Cape Colony, Sudan, Uganda, Rhodesia, East Africa, Zambia, Nigeria, etc. England took possession of Egypt under the pretext of the security of the Zeus Canal. Dutch The Dutch set up colonies in Cape Colony, Natal, Orange Free State and Transvaal. France The French began to move up the Senegal Basin. It went on to capture the Sahara Desert, Algeria, French Congo, Madagascar Island and Morocco. Germany Germany colonized the Southwest Africa, Cameroon and the East African regions, Spain, Rio de Oro region, north of Morocco and some areas in Guinea coast were colonized by Spain. Portugal The Portuguese dominated the eastern regions, Angola region and Mozambique. Italy Italy captured Eritrea, Somaliland, Tripoli and Cyrenica regions in Africa. Bearing Ethiopia and Liberia, the entire African continent was colonized by the European nations. The African nations remained under the foreign rule for years to come. The European nations exploited these nations in various ways and grew richer. The Berlin Conference The European nations held a conference at Berlin in 1884. The conference which was held between 1884 and 1885 agreed to a principle of effective possession. It gave consent to King Leopold's possession of the region in Congo and passed a set of directives for the division of the African regions. Later on, the European nations distributed the African regions among themselves by the year 1914. It was collectively agreed that the new possession of a region in Africa would be interactively decided.